Hi, I'm Tom Stevenson and welcome to Understanding Construction Drawings, Residential Construction Drawings. The fundamentals of all drawings are covered because it really doesn't matter what sector you're in, the types of drawings stay mostly the same. Uh, there's a lot more complexities that we get into later on when we talk about uh, commercial buildings and that sort of thing between structural drawings and architectural drawings. But for now, we're going to look at residential drawings. And in the previous video, we looked at this set of drawings called the Brook Drawings. You can subscribe to my channel and you can look at my playlist and you'll see under the various playlists that I have uh, that deal with construction, construction project management, construction business management, Microsoft project, and print reading that I have quite a selection. So hopefully uh, this site will be useful for you. But under the playlist, uh, print reading and construction drawings, or understanding construction drawings, uh, you'll find a, a list of videos. And this, I believe, is video number 14 in the series. We're looking at a set of drawings called the Brook Drawings. And this set of drawings is used on a production site, meaning that uh, there's a subdivision and it's actually used a number of times in the subdivision. There's actually two front elevations for this particular house and the reason there would be two different front elevations is when you have a whole bunch of houses on the street builders like to have most of the house the same like the floor plan or, or the footprint inside similar from house to house but a lot of municipalities and people don't like their streets to look cookie cutter. So you change the facades of the building and then it actually gives a very rich and different kind of perspective. So in, these, uh, in this particular video, we're gonna be looking at the elevations. In the succeeding video, we'll look at the floor plans for this house. All right, so let's get started. So we have a front elevation, and this, as I said, is the front elevation for the Brook Drawings, and this is front elevation A. And with a front elevation, it's an orthographic drawing. It means it's flat. You don't really see the depth and the changes in depth. So you gotta get kind of used to looking at that, but you, it also means you've gotta be used to switching and looking at different views to fully comprehend what you're looking at. And as I said, today we're looking at elevation drawings uh, and we'll look at floor plans. And then we can really start comparing how the floor plan shows different parts jut out. And then when we look at the front elevation, it'll make sense. When we look at the roof plan, it'll make sense. And I'll show you the roof plan today. Okay, so you can see the front of this house, elevation A, it's got a number of gables. So that's just where the roof goes up and it forms sort of this flat surface. We call that a gable roof. The main roof looks from this viewpoint to be a hip roof. That means that it slopes on all four sides. We'll get a better sense when we go around the building. But I can see that there's a bunch of gables here. There's a little bit of a hip roof here, hip roof over here, right? You can see this, it looks like it sticks out because just by the way it's drawn and you see this comes out on this little roof section. So that means the garage actually sticks out a little bit here. We've got a bit of a segmental arch here over uh, the window. Uh, we've got some uh, basically uh, regular window openings. This particular window here would be a casement. It shows a dashed line. So that means it's hinged on this side and will open outward. So it'll pivot open. Where it says FG, it's fixed glass. So those ones don't open. And we can see the garage doors here. There's a little bit of interesting things going on with the garage doors in the next video where we look at the floor plans. Uh, we can see also there's a step footing here. And the dash lines just simply means it's below ground, it's hidden. And step footings are used for when your depth, like there's no basement underneath the garage. So in this case here, you've got a basement that goes all the way down, uh, full basement underneath here. But over here, it only needs to go down in our jurisdiction four feet to be below the frost line, right? So four feet is for a uh, uh, building or structure in our area. And I'm in uh, the Toronto area in Canada, but Northern areas in North America typically will have four foot. Uh, depths and if you don't have a basement you might have to go deeper than that or if you're in an area where you are uh, 
have uh, deeper frost levels, you may have to go deeper for your footings. But for us, it's four feet. Over here, it's going to be much more than four feet. As you can see, it says top of basement slab here to finished main floor level, eight foot seven. And by finished, it just simply means the top of the subfloor. The subfloor is the plywood that you put on top of the joists. All right. And so there's a lot of elevation, interesting elevation information here when we look at a site plan. And so that top of slab, that would be your concrete basement slab to the top of the main floor your sub floor is eight foot seven of course your ceiling height would be less than that because you've got to take off then the size of the joist and the thickness of the sub floor so in this particular house when we look at the floor plan the joist sizes are actually nine and a half inches so that would and the plywood is five eighths of an inch so you've got nine and a half it's basically ten and a sixteenth uh, or 10 and an eight, sorry. And so you take off 10 and an eight inches from eight foot seven. So that would give you something like uh, seven foot nine inch from the concrete slab to the underside of the ceiling. Pretty good for a basement. Uh, here we've got from the finished main level to the finished second floor. So from the finished main level to the finished second floor, it says it's nine foot 11 inches. So again, we have nine and a half inches for our joists. And you know, I know that by going to the floor plan and I can look at the actual floor plan. So if I go to the basement plan and I rotate it, it'll tell me what the joist size is. And there it is like nine and a half inch beam and floor joist nine and a half inches. So I know what that is, right? So I can look at that. As I said, I'm not gonna spend time on the floor plans today. We'll leave that for another session. So I'll go back down to my drawings. I'll just rotate this around for us. There we go. And I'm looking at this. So it's nine foot 11. So the interesting thing about elevations, if you've got certain measurements, you can figure out other stuff. And so maybe I'll actually start with the finish second level and the top of the plate. Well, that's referring to the top of the wall. And we put typically a double top plate on a frame wall and a single bottom plate. And our dimensional lumber is two by, which really means it's inch and a half thick. So if I really want, if I look at this, my wall height is gonna be eight foot one. If I wanted to figure out what my stud length should be, all I have to do is deduct from eight foot one, the plates, the thicknesses of three of them two for the top plate, one for the bottom plate. So essentially what you've got here is eight foot one, which is 97 inches, and you're gonna subtract four and a half inches from that. So you've got 97 inches, so you're gonna have, end up with uh, 92 and a half inches, right? 92 and a half inches. Uh, that's pretty much what a pre-cut stud is. So when you, in our area, you can buy pre-cut studs and they're already cut to length, so you don't have to cut them all. So that'd be 92 and a half inches. And that eight foot one is giving you a little bit extra so that you can put the drywall on the ceiling. That, that'll come down a half an inch and you leave about a half an inch from the floor for the drywall on the bottom. And then of course the baseboard covers up any of those gaps. So you can really sort of figure out missing components when you really understand what you're looking at on construction drawings. Same thing would go here from our finished main level to the finished second floor level. It indicates that we have nine foot 11 inches. Well, nine times 12 is 108 inches, right? And we've got 11 inches. Well, we don't need that 11 inches because that's in counting the actual floor joist height, which we set is nine and a half inches, and it's counting the subfloor, which is essentially five eighths of an inch. So let's just call it 10 inches to simplify it for now. That would be then basically deducting nine foot 11 minus 10 inches. That's going to give us nine foot one. We already said nine foot is 108 inches. So 108 plus one is 109 inches. So 
we've got 109 inches. We have three plates. We have our double top plate, inch and a half, inch and a half. We have our single bottom plate, inch and a half. So that's four and a half inches. So we're gonna subtract those plates from our 109 inches, four and a half inches, and that's gonna give us 104 and a half inches. So that would be the size of our studs. We cut our studs at 104 and a half inches and we will be good. Or you might be able to get pre-cut studs and the pre-cut studs are essentially uh, already cut to the length that you're after. It just depends on your jurisdiction, etc. So this section of floor to ceiling height is higher than it is on the second floor. So you've got more space uh, on the ceiling, gives a little bit higher look to it. And there's all kinds of different ceiling heights that you'll find in houses these days. You know, standard is like this, eight foot one, and then the pre-cuts are like 92 and a half inches. But very often you might have like nine foot ceilings, 10 foot ceilings, or nine and a half foot ceilings. There's quite a variety out there. Even 12 foot ceilings gives more spatial um, view when you enter the, the building. Okay, so we can see here we've got our brick veneer too. So brick veneer is very popular. We can see here there's a precast uh, stone sill. Precast just means it's precast concrete. It's not actually stone. And we have a stack bond here. So that's where the bricks are stacked on top of each other. There would have to be metal ties to tie that vertical joint that goes in here so that it doesn't crack up those sides, but it's a very you know, nice visual look to it. It has a keystone in place. It would be sitting on a steel lintel, which we'll look at in the floor plans. Uh, they're soldiers. When the brick stands up, those are called soldiers. When they're stacked, it's a stack bond. All right, so just a little bit of difference in the terminology there. This is actually a segmental arch, as I mentioned, and the bricks in an arch, the technical name for the bricks in the arch, is actually called voussoirs. Those are the bricks in an arch. All right, so we can get a good sense on the front here. Let's take a look at another view here. This is the left side view, and you can always look at the legend on the drawings, and it should tell you you know what view you're looking at but I can tell this is the front and so this will be the left side based on the orientation from there so we're looking at that side of the building over here and we can now see how far this sticks out we can see that this part of the roof back there is set back substantially from this part of the roof we can also see there's a number of openings on this side of the house all right and again we can see which windows open and which ones are fixed uh, we can see there's something that juts out the back here, likely for a fireplace. We can see the slopes of the roof, 612. All right, so that's referencing for every 12 inches horizontal, you go up six inches. That gives you the ratio for the slope. It doesn't really matter what the measurement is. I use six and 12 inches. That's why they use 12 because framers like to lay it out on with a framing square. In the old days, when they do a totally cut roof on site, uh, 12 inches. Right, but if you have a slope of six millimeters and 12 millimeters, it's gonna be the same angle. It gives you the same um, roof slope that way. This information down here has to do with building code and it's really concerning itself, what they refer to limiting distance. Depending on how close the house is to another property line, you're limited to how much square footage of glass openings that you can have uh, in, uh, one side of the house again depending on how close it is to the property line and that has to do with how quickly a fire would spread you know so they have certain requirements to limit the spread of fire between units depending on the setbacks of the house and so that's what that's referring to maximum allowable openings is basically seven percent at four foot and if you take that uh, divide it by that, that should give you 7%, 64.37, 919.5, very close to it anyways. And so this is what's being proposed, so it's fine uh, in that way. You can also again see the measurements here for the heights, and also here just to look at this, finished second floor 
underside us underside of soffit and the soffit is the underside where the ease trough is so the ease troughs right there the soffit is the under underside part and like over here it says pre-finished aluminum rainwater leader that's your downspouts they often refer to it as a rainwater leader uh, you may refer to it as a downspout gutter often referred to as an ease trough fascia board that's the vertical face piece uh, that goes on to the end of the roof trusses and vented soffit so the soffit is underneath projects out from the house how much are we projecting here that's projecting a foot basically out from the brick and that under part is vented so it's got little holes in it that allows air to flow up into the attic area right here this little dashed line shown here is for a uh, window well because the windows are less than six inches like they're they're below grade essentially and the window wells are going to stop water from entering into the building this little vertical line here going down the dashed is basically a drain from the bottom of the window well and that will hook up to the uh, weeping tile or drainage tile that goes around the footing so any excess water will be removed from the base of the footings from the base of the foundation which is what you want to have so again you can see different elevation heights provided at different points so you know you know you'd know exactly how much this column is to come up and where you're going to put that cap that stone cap precast uh, concrete cap so that's the left side here's the right side now on the right side you see this it looks like a, there's a vinyl siding on the recessed and side walls tells you it's recessed you would actually really need to look at the floor plans to fully comprehend what's going on there this is recessed as well and the reason this is recessed is it has to do with the limiting distance again these openings likely on this particular I don't have the site plans for this particular house but on this particular lot are likely um, uh, a little bit closer to the lot line so uh, there will be it's recessed in um, from that perspective so if I actually take a look at the floor plan here um, you can sort of see how this is coming inward here right for the door this is if you have the the mud room right door here because uh, there's different options on this particular house uh, then essentially that would allow you to exit there all right if it's allowing you to exit actually you'd be you'd have some space because you'd have to have room on your property to be able to walk up that side uh, and over here is you can see how much it's indented over here right so again this window glazed opening uh, is set back so that because often if they don't have the door for the mudroom option uh, you would not be able to have that window opening because this house would be likely within a foot and a half of the property line so the glazed part would have to be four feet back so how do they do that they do that by having this come inward right uh, so that basically that s slows down the spread of fire okay so we've got that sort of stuff let me see if I can rotate this around again we looked at the left side we looked at the face brick we looked at the right side and we see that there's sloping roofs here so that's a cottage roof like i said that's gable roofs on the front here kind of steps back here that we can get a better perspective of what's jutting out and sticking out from the different side views so that's really showing that oh this sticks out here right it looks like it actually goes back in here and then comes out again and we'll look at that more when we look at the floor plans so that's what's going on over here we can just see that it comes along and then it sticks out you can see the stone has a bit of a return there but it doesn't go all the way along because it's expensive so it's a little bit cheaper to just show it at the front of the structure and here's that second front view that i was mentioning so this is that second front elevation and it's quite different right like it looks quite different you know you don't have any yeah don't have those extra gables up here 
you have one gable, and over here you got a flat roof, right? So that's giving a different look. You still have a segmental arch over here, but it's a little bit different in how it looks. You've got like a roll-lock brick underneath here uh, that gives a different look and to it, right? So it gives a little bit of a different perspective. You also see here it says the stack bond surround is projected half inch proj that means it's projected and typical so that really means this is all going to project half an inch it sticks out about a half an inch so it gives it a nice shadow line when you're actually looking at it, it kind of makes it pop uh, it doesn't do it on this picture but in real life when you see it it'll make it pop so again this is kind of you had this gable with the decorative siding here and sort of a little bit of a tutor look up here uh, and a little bit of stone, precast stone with the uh, hip roof over here. And when we go down here, it's a little bit different, right? Uh, flat roof. Uh, this is jutting out different too. So it looks like this is back. This juts out and it looks like this either juts out more or less. And I can kind of tell by the roof line the way it's showing that this juts out a little bit further. Again, we'll look at that in the next series when we look at the floor plans. And it's got this sort of decorative, sort of um, purely decorative uh, louver up here, like a vent. Look at the left side. Well, for the most part, the left side is very similar, but what's going on over here is quite different. Okay. And the roof lines are quite different. On the right side, again, we've got that door with that recess here, but over here, it's quite different jutting out, jutting out, jutting out further. Like I said, so this comes out, that comes out, this comes out. Going back, that's that to here, this comes out, that's that to there, that comes out further. And you'll really see that difference when we get into looking at the floor plans. So whenever you're working with somebody and they look like they really know what they're doing and looking at through the drawings, and they're flipping from drawing to drawing, They've already reviewed them for quite a few hours and so they have a good perspective and they're visualizing it. They're really trying to visualize these connection points from the different sides and what's this thing going to look like when they're going to construct it. Uh, and you're looking at the finished product and so when you get good at this stuff you kind of de deconstruct it in your mind and like okay so how do I get it to this stage piece by piece by piece and it gives you a really good perspective, especially when you start to understand the sequencing and how to develop project schedules. It all works together. It takes a while uh, to really learn, but once you get to a certain point, the light goes on. It takes a while, so be patient with it. it. Takes a while, but the light will go on at a certain point. All right, so we got this little roof extending out here. This is the other side of that fireplace, uh, which is on the back of the house. And here's the back of the house. So there you can see fireplace vent. Uh, it's a gas fireplace, so it's a direct vent, so it doesn't need a chimney uh, here. Uh, and this is the back showing you the different windows. You can tell which one's open and which ones are fixed, FG, fixed glass. You can see the two roof lines on the left here. So elevation A and elevation B. And so you can, again, elevation a has a number of gables, right? So it's got a number of gable uh, roofs that we're actually looking at on elevation A. And elevation B doesn't have that. It's more um, basically hips, except for this right there. That would be a gable um, roof. And so you can refer back or you can scroll back in the video to kind of go back and forth and get a good sense of what's going on. This is the rear view. So if you look at the rear view of both houses, they're more or less the same, right? Like you see the rear, the rear, they're more or less the same. Why? Like I said, the inside of the house is pretty much the same. It's on the outside and the difference is that this will make to the outside because here it sticks out a little bit further here and then this goes back. This is quite different and we'll see that a lot when we look at the floor plans. You can see the roof vents here they're showing. They don't show any on the front because they don't want it to be sort of visible from the street, right? Looks better without seeing the roof vents from the street and the front being over here. You can also see this is a flat roof and this is basically a hip roof. Main roof it overall is a hip roof except for all that's going on in the fronts of these two 
houses. You can even see here, see this here? It's showing a dashed line, it says roof, line of roof elevation B shown dotted. So the designer's done a good job here. That's that spot right there. That's that, see that's elevation B. And from the back, this is what would be different. That would stick up because you don't see it sticking up on elevation A, right? And that's because of the difference in the front elevations. So it's these little things, getting used to it, visualizing yourself, walking around the building, taking a good look around the building, and what does it look like? Now this particular set of drawings also has an upgraded rear elevation. And this likely would come into play where, and it says for elevation A, where maybe the house is on the back of a ravine, maybe there's bike paths and that, uh, a lot of municipalities put in what they call architectural control, meaning that they don't let the builder just make it kind of plain on the back. They say, no, you're gonna make some upgrades to the back because people are walking along this path, they're biking along the path, we want the neighborhood to look nice, and they uh, make the builder comply to certain architectural control requirements. And in this case, it would give uh, a lot more detail than just, than just a plain kind of hip roof, right? So they'll do these kind of things uh, to upgrade the back of the house. And you see how here around the windows, there's nothing too fancy, fairly plain. And then you look at this, it's kind of like the front, right? You've got the stack bonding and the soldier courses on the bottom and the top, and it makes it pop a little bit more. These types of details occur. So I hope that's giving you an idea of visualizing the elevations of a set of drawings. And this was a little more advanced for you. You can go back to my earlier videos and I just do like one house at a time. We're advancing a little bit uh, with this particular model because it's got the different options tied uh, through uh, this set of drawings. Uh, and the next session we'll look at floor plans and in detail. And then we'll start looking between the floor plans and the elevations and trying to put it together. And we'll be adding detailed drawings to the mix. So I'm Tom Stevenson, wishing you a wonderful day. Please don't uh, forget to uh, subscribe to my channel and click notifications if you want to see when new videos come up. For now, we'll see you till next time. Bye-bye.